Welcome to Glad Science, where we're glad to see you. I'm Sakshi, and in this video, I'll be covering cell division. But before we go into the process itself, let's talk about a chromosome. A chromosome is a highly coiled and condensed strand of DNA that contains your genetic material. A chromosome has two sister chromatids that are held together by a centromere. Now that you know what a chromosome is, let's move on to the cell cycle. The cell cycle is composed of G1, S, G2, mitosis, and cytokinesis. You should note that G1, which stands for growth 1, S, which stands for synthesis, and G2, which stands for growth 2, come together to create the interphase part of the cell cycle. The interphase is where the cell spends 90% of its life and is where the nucleoli are visible. After interphase comes mitosis. So mitosis is the division of somatic or body cells which aid in growth and repair, while meiosis is the division of sex cells or gametes, so it only occurs in sexually reproducing organisms. You should also note that mitosis results in two identical diploid daughter cells, while meiosis results in four unique haploid daughter cells. So getting back to the cell cycle, now that you know what interphase is, now let's go into mitosis in detail. There are four different stages of mitosis. The way I remember them is through the acronym PMAT. So you have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Prophase is the longest part of mitosis and is where the nuclear membrane starts to disintegrate and nucleoli disappear. Also, centrioles start to make their way to the opposite sides of the poles. Then we have metaphase in which all the chromosomes line up at the equator to um, get ready for the division itself and is also where the centrosomes are already at their opposite poles and start to release their spindle fibers. In anaphase, the spindle fibers connect to the centromeres of the chromosomes and start to pull the sister chromatids apart. And then in telophase, you have the reformation of the nuclear membrane. And then after mitosis, you have cytokinesis, and that is basically the division of the cytoplasm of the cell. So in animal cells, you get what is called a cleavage furrow because the cell starts to pinch in between so it could separate into the two different cells. While in uh, plant cells, you get what is called a cell plate in between along with the middle lamella, so then they separate in that way. And now moving on to meiosis. Meiosis has two stages. The first stage has a fancy name which is called reduction division, um, but you don't really need to know that. It's just a fun fact or a little FYI. Um, but so the first stage of meiosis is when you have this synapsis and crossing over. So the synapsis is when the chromosomes pair up homologously and crossing over is exactly how it sounds. It's when parts of the chromosomes swap parts to have genetic variation which is obviously favored in nature. The second part of meiosis is when the cell divides again. So you have two haploid cells and they divide again to have four unique haploid cells at the end. So a quick way to remember that is that diploid is 2n while haploid is 1n. So meiosis goes from 2n to n to n. If you were looking for a more in-detailed explanation of spermatogenesis or oogenesis, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below because I will be covering that soon. So thank you for checking this out and watching this video. And I am always glad to be of help.